anyway, I'm going to get started. I'm Terry Doran. This is Theater for Ideas, a community forum uh, discussion program to discuss different issues of the day. It's audience participation, and uh, we are being videotaped. And I want to thank Norm Compton from Access Fort Wayne for coming out and setting all the equipment up. And it will be on Access, and uh, I'll let you all know when that will be. The topic, I called it, Let Them Eat Cake. This is a famous one-liner from Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette was what, the Queen of France, and this was her reply to her citizens when told, gee, we're hungry, we don't have anything, uh, we're, we're, we're poor, just let them eat cake. You know, when I first heard that in high school, I thought it meant, well, cake, that's, I wouldn't mind eating cake, but I think it must mean like mud or some kind of really crappy stuff. So it was, a, it was a utterance of contempt. And for her effort, the citizens of France beheaded her. She should have been a U.S. Senator in the 2005 America, a member of Congress. So then you get promoted. These people have the finest health care plan in the world. We are the only country, a developed country on this planet, that does not think enough of its citizens to provide them with health insurance. The only one, 18,000 Americans die every year because they can't afford to go to the doctor and die. And half, and Randy can, is a, specializes in bankruptcy, so he can talk a lot more about the new law, but I read that about half of all bankruptcy filings are due to medical problems. Now, I wrote a letter, the way this program started was unusual. The guest contacted me. I wrote a letter. I wrote a lot of letters. One actually got published in the New Sentinel uh, in June. And it was issuing a challenge to buy Luger Souter uh, Bush, yeah. Saying, uh, you come and you tell people had to file bankruptcy why they made a bad decision. That was Evan Bayes term, I think. It's a bad, dis people make bad decisions. We shouldn't have to pay for them. Now, Evan Bayh is funded, his number one campaign contributor is a company called Goldman Sachs. According to their email, they cater to wealthy individuals, corporations. They are the kind of company that writes laws like the bankruptcy law. Evan Bayh just signs it. He doesn't even write it, probably. So you know, excuse me, you know there's a connection between campaign contributions and the way that the senators, Congress people uh, vote and it sways their decision. So that's the background and uh, Lynn and Mr. Stiles both responded to my letter and Ken Coney, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the panel. This is Randall Stiles and uh, the day that I got his email saying what a good editorial it was, and as I said earlier, what keen insight and <laughs> judgment of character and literature you have. Uh, that very night I saw a commercial <laughs> saying, you need to file bankruptcy. So anyway, Randy can talk a lot about his experience and uh, the new law. Ken Coning I met in Garrett where I used to live. Ken is an artist, uh, beautiful paintings and, and uh, photographs. And I found out through talking, actually I was in Garrett to tape interviews about the uh, radioactive waste that the government, another fine government program, is sending through the middle of Garrett on the railroad. And then Lynn Kayser used to work for me uh, with Theater for Ideas, and uh, she's now married, the mother of two uh, beautiful little girls. And, uh, my daughter's running around somewhere, too. <laughs> so anyway, that's the introduction, and uh, I just want to get started. Uh, Randy, talk a little bit about this bankruptcy law. It does not exempt, I just want to say right up front, it does not exempt people who file because of medical bills. Well, that's true. It doesn't make a distinction, distinction between medical bills or other types of debt that people incur. Um, you know, it's a shift from the system we have now, which is pretty open. Um, and now we're moving to more of a means testing type of situation. Um, 
And it's going to cause more people to have to file 13s or they're going to have to be in repayment plans. Well, why don't you say what the difference is between, I know there's a 7 and a 13. That's right. What's well, the difference the basic, right now, anyway? Well, the basic consumer bankruptcies are Chapter 7 and Chapter 13. The Chapter 7 is the one that wipes out your debt pretty much in about four months. You know, as the process goes along, you file the case, you have one hearing, and it's good for people that don't have a lot of assets that, you know, have come upon hard times and it gets you out of debt quickly. Um, the 13 is a debt repayment plan. As it stands now, it's normally used for people that are behind on their mortgage or have an overfinanced vehicle or some other type of asset they have to protect. So they have to have a payment plan in order to get out of debt. Um, the new law is going to make more people that don't have those assets go into 13s and have repayment plans. So that's part of, part of the, the hurdle that, that people are facing now that are having financial difficulties. Coming after so, so there's going to be a lot more uh, payment. I mean, they're, they're going to, yeah. what if you can't pay? Like you got the medical bills, uh, they put you in 13. What are they going to do? Take your house or your car or your children or I mean, <laughs> what, what if you don't have? Uh, Ken talked about this. I mean, you literally don't have the money. You're right. not ripping the system off. You right. don't have the suppose, money. Suppose you got, you're unemployed. Yeah. How, how in the world do are they going to provide work camps? <laughs> government work camps where you earn, you know, earn back the amount that you owe somebody. When you're experienced, the majority of people you work with, your clients, are really ripping off. You know, you know, the, the myth is, here's the person goes to Sears, out the mall, runs up thousands of dollars worth of debt. And this is the kind of person that these senators are saying, oh, you got to stop this. Right. And let's just say this too. Uh, credit card companies lost four billion dollars in this kind of uh, consumer debt, not paying. They collected fourteen billion dollars in late fees. So you think they could get along with ten billion dollars, wouldn't you? So go ahead. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, my experience has been that a lot of people that end up in bankruptcy, there, there's a number of situations that, that I call catalysts that put you in that situation where you're overwhelmed with debt. Um, you know, divorce, medical emergencies that weren't planned for, um, and those uh, job loss. You know, a lot of these situations are really outside of the control of the, the individual that's mm -hmm. going to be placed in the bankruptcy. Um, so that's part of, you know, and that was part of what drew bankruptcy and, and helping people that are in those situations that, that really legitimately need help. Um, you know, in, in any situation like bankruptcy where you can get out of debt, you know, like that, you know, you're going to have some abuse. but. I don't think it's as rampant. I don't think I don't think it was as rampant to require such a stringent yeah. law that, that we have. Now the law does have some good and some bad, and we're still working out the nuts and bolts of it. I mean, until we get the local rules from the courts here in Indiana that are going to apply to it, you know, taking it from paper to practice is going to take some time. You know, I'm sure there's going to be challenges from other lawyers that you know, as far as constitutionality, um, and really being able to actually work with this law. There are some inconsistencies within the law of it itself that are just going to have to be worked out. But, um, you know, with any law change, that's kind of the situation there. Well, well, the other thing that bothers me a lot about law, I mean, I really think it's shameful that this country is not health insurance. I mean, last year I got very sick. I've been in prison my way. An injury she had to her employer, uh, we would, I don't know what would have happened. My hospital bill was over $100,000, and I had to play Russian roulette with my life uh, we postponed treatment even test because her health insurance was supposed to kick in on a certain date. We had no assurance even it did uh, if it would go ahead and pay for it. Actually, they did. And thanks, Susan, tremendously for all the effort she put uh, letters and so forth she sent them. But they were looking for the dreaded pre-existing condition. And uh, just about anything you have can be a pre-existing condition. Sure. So, uh, and the other thing is, you know, there's nothing, and correct me if I'm wrong, this new law to provide penalties for credit card companies. I mean, for example, you go to a bank and you get OCD, they'll give you like two or three percent. Now, let's say you've given them $5,000, they'll give you, say, three percent on a CD for six months or something. Say you want to borrow $5,000, your interest would be like 20 percent. Now, why aren't they penalized for that kind of stuff? And you make one late payment like uh, I, I have a credit uh, due, and I, I actually was ahead of the payments, 
but didn't make a payment, so they assessed a $29 late fee charge, which I called and they removed it. But anyway, um, why don't you guys tell your stories of actually filing bankruptcy, and then we'll... Uh, I know Ken's interested in coming up with some solutions, too, and uh, I've been here for everybody in the audience, but then why don't you just tell me the story you told me. Oh, yeah. Beautiful uh, apartment here in the yeah. hospital. Well, yeah, we're fortunate that... Uh, uh, the model is 100 pounds of lender and it's housing. Uh, it's an income based uh, but, uh, um, We're on security, basically. My wife's working, uh, cleaning uh, homes daily. We're able to clean homes to work through it. He sent her off to do that to, to supplement our income. And uh, Terry, you're a fine judge of our, uh, unfortunately, our hasn't been selling yet to buy the little more income. But, uh, you know. It's time to sell about 10 years ago. Or some angry, you know, like you're chopping a good range of trying to start from the last place and I did do it to Gulf Stone's uh, box. So, you know, anyhow, um, they finally figured out what her own pattern her own. Uh, she was still the operator for this, this problem. And she was on, she was on, say, a uh, very, um, centrist, uh, because she was having a problem with addiction. She was on uh, two or three different occasions. And, uh, so, all of a sudden, we, uh, it is kind of interesting, uh, so lacking an occasion to develop a, the surgeon can surgery occurs on all food, including even all water. So the, um, the nurse couldn't give her, give her the utilities, uh, tranquil, whatever they were, the spinners board. And, uh, and uh, I was told she was deprived of vacation, and she started doing really strangely. And she was really, you know, uh, really weird out. And the nurse, I had to be there, and the uh, nurse was like going through, uh, trust her all, uh, uh, some, she said, see, I was going through, but she said, I tried to put her, her address. I can't reach him, I can't get answers. I don't know what to do. Um, you know, so they were not giving up pills. You know, you want to come in the head straight edge. Uh, so, uh, I think it was night. I did a on her letter, uh, uh, point out the total proper care I was receiving. Uh, went to eat, but that's not a uh, really order. And, uh, later on her desk, uh, I said, you know, I just went out, hey, I was going to die. There's something that's down here. Later on her desk, uh, that's how you know him. And, uh, Went home another uh, see my wife and, and I finally got called. Uh, uh, we moved your wife tenth care, uh, she's getting the best care at all, uh et cetera, et cetera. Uh the family doctors typically. Uh so, you know, we can intense care point. Uh okay, necessary to hear from a drug is just asking questions that all they do. So you couldn't give water to search down our throat, you're not pulled out. So uh um so uh, intense spends it all straight to church for uh could work. She was more uh she got if she will not be on remove the 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 control cells where she was there. And um, so she was recovering and then she developed a uh, problem with the geese and uh um because I guess her uh her siblings are some people out of whack and uh I'm now trained on uh how to help her deal with her therapy she was supposed to get home, supposed to um uh help her insulin for him. So they I can get her up uh it was suddenly uh um I'm greeted by somebody in the upper tech age the uh sheriff. It turns out during the night somebody um, so I some member of the staff with my wife and her to agree that uh, I wouldn't be able to take care of her home and stack some paper that she didn't even go to the nursing home. My wife's totally doing what she's going on, you know. And I was particularly furious with my interest in the nursing home, so I explained it to everyone. Oh, the sheriff was going to the hospital, they see people going to the nursing home. Anyhow, the door was on, you know, so it's an absolute nightmare. I was in calls for them. Uh, people wanted me to go, you know, and so forth, you know. So, um, eventually, one, somebody survived the nursing home, but I used to go there. And of course, we were just around those we were reaching at. My oldest son, um, we were able to our home and around where I was. And we ended up going through Jackson. Uh, they were getting your homes and something? Well, uh, we made payments, uh, you know. We were way behind, yeah, so I believe we stayed there. So, no, they don't take them in, in bankruptcy, but I mean, because of the situation, we were at risk of losing. So, uh, we, uh, uh, we got through seven and, uh, Never have, have been interested in owning plastic money or anything. Everything is as you go. It was a tremendous lesson in well, avoid serious debt. Didn't you apply for Medicaid or something? Yeah. Oh, Medicaid, yes. Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid, that was another interesting nightmare. Um, they they played all sorts of games. They went all kinds of documentation. I had to drive clear we out New Haven at that time. I had to drive clear across town. Always wanting more documentation, they kept refusing getting that Medicaid. Finally, I ended up writing a letter to the director 
of uh, the agency, the agency uh, Medicaid agency, and said, hey, I want a total, complete investigation of our case. They're just playing games with us, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, wham, uh, we got our Medicaid in a day or two. Uh, and then got a letter of apology from the direct state director about the way they handle our case. So, but Medicaid, of course, uh, requires you to, they were the ones that wanted us to get rid of all of our assets, except the car home, I think. Uh, they even had us get rid of, forced us to get rid of, uh, we had a $1,500 or $2,000 life insurance policy to hopefully bury us. Uh, they required us to do that. Uh, so, uh, I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, uh, when you go through something like this, all you can say to yourself is, hey, take proper care of yourself, guys. You know, your best life and your best health insurance is taking proper care of yourself. And, and I've been trying to educate myself, and Jan has to. You know, even at this late state of the game, to take the best possible care of yourself and stay out of the doctor's office. What's that you did? And sorry for all that hardship. Well, I've been forced into defense twice. The first time... Um, it was when you were working for theater, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all the cap, all the debts are through before the oh, okay. Um My The first time salary. was... Um, I had been married young and had suffered a couple of miscarriages and had accrued approximately $25,000 worth of medical bills. And um, my husband at the time did not have insurance. I did not have insurance where I was employed. And uh, we ended up, my husband filed for divorce because he quote unquote wanted to live with a have a wife who could have children. So I was stuck with all these bills and not a chance, being the gentleman that he was, that he would live up to his responsibility and pay half of them. Um, so as a process, as a part of the divorce, uh, the attorney that handled my divorce suggested also that we file bankruptcy and stuff. I did not include him on the bankruptcy. Um, and so um, I got rid of all the medical bills. I'd been plagued by medical, this was the beginning of uh, really, uh, some really serious medical symptoms that I had, you know, I, that I, had. Um, I was born three months prematurely in 1961. They didn't think I was going to live. Um, they had to, I was an RH factor baby and all this stuff is treated today. And it's, it's no big deal. I almost died. My dad had me baptized the second day in the hospital because they thought I was not going to live. And due to the fact that I'm pre the, the prematurity, that's what the, my endocrinologist believes. It's either because of heredity or prematurity or a combination of the two. Basically, my whole endocrine system has failed. And that the two miscarriages uh, that I experienced earlier in my life were symptoms of untreated thyroid, untreated Addison's disease, which is a disease of the adrenal glands, and untreated diabetes, which, uh, so it was a combination. And it wasn't, I kept having all this stuff going around. I had just, then I started, I, finally I was able to get on disability. I kept having all this stuff go wrong with me and stuff. So I'd have, I've had uh, uh, periods where I couldn't keep anything in my stomach and I would start vomiting. And I had to put in the hospital a couple times for dehydration. Nobody figured out, figuring out what was wrong. They had me see a psychiatrist. They thought it was nuts. I was believing. Well, eventually they diagnosed this whole spectrum of disorders. And thank God I had a good doctor. Uh, he wrote letters. I was able to get disability. I was able to get my Medicaid before, you know, without without any problems. And I, you know, I'm sorry to hear about your experience. Um, now, the second time around now here, that we, my husband and I, my second husband and I, filed bankruptcy this past, it was just, just, just discharged in January. Um, we had purchased a house through the Fort Wayne Neighborhood Housing Partnership. And if you've read, kept abreast of things in the newspaper, everything, it was pretty much a fraudulent operation. Um, we ended up paying $29,000 for a house that was uh, listed at 
and then they were supposed to do $10,000 worth of improvements. We got basically a second-hand furnace that had been remanufactured, and the whole control module went out on it less than a year after we'd been in the house. Finally, the one basement wall during that one of the, those torrential rainstorms that Fort Wayne's become so famous for, um, we lost pretty much all the whole basement wall, but it was below the, below the line now because um, we had sewage backup in the groundwater. Well, the insurance, I had sewage backup protection as a writer in our house insurance, but they wouldn't pay because they said it was a flood. So we go to FEMA, and FEMA says, well, we can't help you because the amount of repairs needed to this house exceed more than 50% of its value. So, in the meantime, I'm panicking. I have, we can't live in the house. The house is not having um, I have, uh, at the time, uh, at that time, Madeline little bit was just about two years old, and Trisha was six, six years old, starting uh, kindergarten. And we couldn't stay there, and I was afraid Somebody going to call protective services. Uh, Code's going to come after they're going to condemn the house. Blah blah. We just packed everything up. I quit paying the mortgage. I took the mortgage payment and money and money we had in the bank and moved into a apartment complex. Well, then probably after six months, we didn't have problems. It was approximately, but we were paying rent. It had been approximately, but we'd been paying rent utilities on on the house that so was basically condemnable. It. Um, but then uh, the other strike of fortune is my husband had worked in the had worked in the restaurant industry for 15 years at one place and was in management, and well they started hiring people in for oh basically less than half of what he was making a year because he'd been there so long, so they decided to fire him. So we lost our almost fifty thousand dollar a year income and went to basically one year, the one year after we filed bankruptcy, we had income of just over $13,000. And well, things are looking up for us now. I mean, he, you know, he's gone on, we're still not make. he still is not making what he used to make. Um, I'm trying to find a job. I'm a lot, I have a part-time job. My uh, littlest one is starting preschool, and my other one's in third grade. And uh, I can't find a job, and part of the reason I'm having a problem finding jobs at every place where you apply now is that they run a credit check on you. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple people come to two places that I've applied and I called back to check up, check up on the application. After I've had great interviews, they said, I'm sorry, company policy, you had a bankruptcy within such and such period of time. I'm sorry, we can't hire you. I'm living the American dream. So I'm still looking for a job. I can't find my have been looking for since June. I've probably applied probably eight and a half places everywhere. I can't get a job washing dishes. I mean I'm not I'm not unwilling to get dirty. I can't get a cleaning job. I can't get a job washing dishes. I've been eight I've been fast food, I've been retail, I have been just about everywhere, every different type of business and I cannot get a job. Of course I haven't worked in a long time either because I've been at home raising children. But um, Part of it, I've had two people, employ, prospective employees, come back and say directly that my failure to employ was due to bankruptcy. And you want to respond, or does this sound familiar in any way to some of the people that come to you? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, for most people that go into bankruptcy, it's a last resort. Um, you know, it's not something that people it's go into life. There's a stigma or two. There is like, still a stigma, yes. Um, you know, less so now than it was before. Because so many people have been in a situation like that, that they end up uh, you know, with the kind of way it's been for the past several years.
players and you know, so people have to be less moved and you know, so it's not that stability, it's not the boom that it was before everyone was able there was a lot of jobs and people just kinda go do as they please. So time is nothing.